Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Donald Francis, and welcome to Manifesting Thoughts Podcast, where we're helping people bring their imagination into reality. Listen, in this video, I get a chance to interview an award-winning content creator for television and film production for over 30 years. I introduce to some and present to others, none other than Mr. Sarah Khan. Enjoy. <laughs> Mr. Sarah Khan, and he is a writer extraordinaire. Uh, he, he wrote short films, skits, uh, TV shows, you name it. I mean, movies, you name it. And one of the latest movies he have done was Love. He had uh, co-host, uh, co-written with Mr. John Arrington. And we know that uh, Mr. Sarah Khan is a writer expert. You know, and if you want your play, you want your movie to be something, you got a small idea. Mr. Sarah Khan is somebody that you would want to see, you know, and uh, he's just a great brother. And I'm glad to have him on the show today. Where are you from and where have you been raised? What's up? Okay, Brooklyn, New York, Brooklyn born, uh, mm. you know, out in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn, and then uh, eventually the Bushwick section of Brooklyn. So I've been in Brooklyn pretty much all my life, man. Absolutely, man. I'm going to tell you, you know, I've been a Reddit native for all I can remember, you know, remember. and and so we know about Brooklyn all oh, too well, <laughs> you know. Yeah, man. And so uh, what was it like growing up in Brooklyn uh, before becoming a writer? I mean, it was cool, you know, um, yeah. you know, I was a, you know, traveler, just moving around a lot, you know, yeah. couldn't go very far. I'm talking about in the neighborhood and stuff like that. I would hang out at uh, places like ABC at all my children, the, the soap opera set. I was always around places like that, just, you know, being curious about how it all works, how it all comes together. So Wow. That's, that's amazing. Cool. I'm sorry. Yeah. That, wow. That's amazing. Because that was going to lead me to my next question, which was going to dive right in. What inspired you? How did you get to the place of wanting to write, you know, uh, scripts and movies? Was there anything else before this um, that that caused you to have a trigger, you know, to say, you know, I want to write movies or whatever. How did that start for you? Oh, actually, the first script that I ever wrote, maybe about 20 years ago, I would say, maybe 20 years ago, first script I ever wrote, it was inspired my, by my two sons. Uh, I wanted to create something to kind of bridge a gap so that they can kind of enter my world of show business. They both wanted to be actors and stuff like that. So I wrote a script called Brothers Are Gonna Work It Out. Wow. And uh, I actually started working with the New York City Housing Authority at that time. And I was a director in the community centers, community operations. And so I had the, the funding, I had the opportunity to bring that to life, you know, by using the community, the, the, you know, the youth in the community and all that. And also, you know, bring my sons in as well. So that was my first time really writing something. And then to see that on the screen that played at the, um, what was it, the Linden Multiplex Theater in uh, Brooklyn is where wow. it did, you know, I got all the city officials involved the borough president laid out the red carpet for us and cringe lights crossing the sky so i really gave the actors an experience wow. and that was my first time as a writer and director so wow. yeah that that was like my start you know wow now were you around a teenager about this time or no I was saying my late 30s. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm not trying to get you to tell your age. <laughs> oh, man. I'm 58 years old. I'm doing Yo, bro, you, you, you look 30 forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You know? I mean, and we'll talk about your uh, secret, you know, yeah. <laughs> to, to look in the, the way you look at that particular age, bro. And we'll talk about that, too. <laughs> you know? Wow, but, uh, wow, man. And That's how I got there, though. That was my first thing with writing. Got you. And uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man. So, wow, that's that's amazing. So now, uh, so you're in, you know, you're into writing at this particular time. You, you, you're like on a big scale. You started off where people would try to, be, you know, to get to technically, you know. And um, and so what, what inspired you to want to write that particular, uh, you know, uh, script? Well, you know, again. You know, I said, like, you know, my children, like, that was the real inspiration. I wanted to do something that they can relate to. And, right. And I brought all these other characters in and whatever was going on in the in the late 80s, early yeah. 90s, yeah. you know, to be a part of the script. Right. And, you know, it was so funny because I was terrible in school. I had, a teachers would be, wouldn't even believe that, I, <laughs> that I'm a writer. You know what I'm saying? Grammar was terrible. Reading wasn't so great. You know, I'm just going to be honest, you know, and that's like middle school, ju ju junior high school, early high school. I just, you know, but that's when you know that you have a gift by God or from God, 
when you can just do it. See, no school, no institution of learning can claim they made Suricon. That's wow. that was all for gifts. That was wow. all inspired in me, and I followed it. You know, wow. Wow. That's where the inspiration came from. And, and wow. Doing. You know, it's amazing to me. Uh, I just did a live on just the other night. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it was actually our debut, you know, because we'll be airing out every Tuesday now at 8 o'clock. Okay. And uh, we, was, we wanted to sort of give some light on what manifestation is. And the question we had was, is it necessary to even have a vision board, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to visualize some of the things, you know, um, uh, that you that inspired you, you know. Right. I mean, I hear a lot about that today. Right. Um, I think I was doing that anyway, not so much on a vision board, but in my own mind. Right. You know right. Saying? Absolutely. Being able to be a visionary, being able to see, yeah, you know, yeah. see things. Yes. You know, to do a movie or to do a script, you have to visually see that un unfold in your own mind. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Donald Francis, and welcome to Manifested Thoughts Podcast, where we're helping people bring their imagination into reality. Yo, we're already giving away gifts, and we're only a few subscribers in. The only thing you have to do is go to ManifestedThoughts888 at gmail.com. One more time, ManifestedThoughts888 at gmail.com. After you do that, you'll type in giveaways and type in one of the topics that we've talked about on our platform, and bam, it's over. Just like that. Back to the program. Gonna hit the ground running, running. Absolutely. So I was always a good storyteller. You know, back in the day, storytelling was considered like you're a liar. We couldn't say the word lie when we were coming up when we were kids. You know, you, you, you we couldn't say you're a liar, you're a liar. No, we would say storytelling. Oh, he's telling stories, he's storytelling. So anytime I hear that, it makes me laugh, storytelling. But um, yeah, you know, I became like a storyteller. I always wanted to tell stories. Wow, that's amazing. And, and you know, the second part to that, too, was uh, I had a chance to share. This is in light of how you wanted to, you know, just you were inspired to write. Nobody taught you, you know, nobody can say that they made Mr. Sarah Khan. Uh, me, you know, coming up in church, uh, I remember I was, you know, just a, I'm, I'm not too, too tall, but at the same time, I was much shorter back then. And uh, we used to be on a junior usher board. <clears throat> and I remember the Calvary Baptist Church being right there in uh, Brooklyn. For those of you who are watching outside of America or New York, or whatever the case would be, Brooklyn, New York, right there, uh, Court Street area. And um, it was crazy because I was the junior usher, <laughs> and but I was so into music and didn't realize it, Sarah Khan, that I was into music. And I was just sharing this just the other night, and I was letting them know that after the service was over, I was too scared to really go to the front because everybody was all loud and things like that. And I, I just didn't know about what that was about. So after the service was over, I would go to the front just to take a look at the drums and just marvel at it, you know, just wonder at like, wow, it's something about this type of, you know, instrument that I'm intrigued that I might want to just get on. Fast forwarding, they moved the church to Red Hook Projects and I'm a little older now. Uh, and I used to watch this guy named Ronnie uh, Williams play the drums, and he used to be so good with his rudiments, you know, that his, his wrist was so great, I just could not really comprehend or apprehend all of how he did what he did. Right. But his brother was much simpler, you know. I never touched the drums at all until one Saturday uh, his brother got on, and I, I knew what to do with the snare drum and the kick. I just didn't know what to do with that thing they called the hi-hat, you know. Uh -huh. And so when I found out by him playing, I looked, I took it in because he did it slower for me without even knowing that he was, you know, I was watching. Wow. Laid down, Sarah Khan, that same night, which was a Saturday into Sunday, mm -hmm. had a dream that I was playing the drums. That following Sunday, the, the Sunday after that, actually, mm -hmm. I got up, got sticks, and I started playing, bro. Oh, wow. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Just started playing. My sons, he he, he played much better than me, Daniel, Donald Jr. But but I mean, just to 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 just to tell our viewers, listen, what's on the inside of you, it comes out no matter what, and can't nobody claim that. Whatever's inside of you is the thing that is going to manifest itself, no matter where you go, no matter what else you want to do. You, Sarah, Carl, you could have said, you know, what? I want to just bake cakes. Let's do piping on the cakes, right? But that would have came out as far as you writing. You just start to write about the bakery, write about the cakes, write about <laughs> write about the customers. It's everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. So, so again, I, I can I can concur with you when you talk about 
nobody made Sarah Khan when it came, you know, down to writing and stuff. So let's talk about the producer level. Um, now, I'm going to tell you something. I, I've never been on a set before. I'm newly starting to learn how to shoot cinematic. I've been into video and stuff like that since the pandemic. I would say 2021, 2020, yeah, early 2020, all of 2021, all, all the way down to now. Nobody's seen this. Mm. Nobody knew. Sarah Khan, I'm not making this, this this about me at all, but I know you could concur with this, which was, I remember that when I was about maybe 10 or 11, when my mom, she used to go to go to work on weekends. I used to sneak my friends in and I used to get a sheet and put it across the walls and I used to have puppet shows and I would charge my friends for the puppet show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But little to my surprise did I know that I was doing production. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And that one day, beside ministry, I thought that production, I didn't know production would meet me, you know? And now I did a little small, mini, mini short film just to get my feet wet to fast forward, right? I did not know, Mr. Sarah Khan, that everything in production and movie making was a thing. From somebody getting a can of soda, from somebody getting the, you know, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? From somebody getting the light, somebody pulling up a chair, you know, somebody uh, holding the wires, the gaffer, you know, the 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 AD, you know, the, the director of photography. I didn't know about all of that. One of the things that I've never experienced um, was having people audition for a script, you know, mm-hmm. and after picking those particular individuals, now being into the hands of the director, where do we go from there, Mr. Sarakon, as, as far as production is concerned? Um. When, so you're saying like with actors and then yes. being turned over after you choose them? Absolutely. Well, I have my own formula for Talk how, I, how I look at actors. You know what I'm saying? Yes. First of all, they, 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 they can't just be good at reading words off paper. You know, there's a whole lot of other factors that you got to take into consideration. Are they serious about their craft? Is this something that they really want to do? Are they married? Do they have children? Is it going to be a problem getting to set? Uh, you know, all of them things. Do they really know how to separate themselves to become what the script says that they're supposed to come? So there's questions and different things that I speak with them about just in general conversation to really find out if that's the right person. So about 20, 20, 25% of it is just, you know, the actual talent. So a lot of them got talent. Yeah. How hungry they are. Are they a godsend? I need to know if you're a God sent to me. So I have to know these things. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I, so I go through a lot of those different processes, even when the other team members don't really know that that's what I'm doing. But if I put my print on someone and say, that's the one, then believe me, that's the one. Wow. How, how important is it to have a relationship with those individuals um, as a director? Is it just, all right, you come to the set, you know, you're doing a good job. I feel you. Uh, let's go. Or is it, let's, let's have a cup of coffee. Absolutely not. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> had, you know, being that, you know, you uh, brought up the, the love project. I had tons of conversations with, um, the leading characters. You wow. know, sometime, um, John, Dave, Clyde, they knew I, I was doing that. And sometimes they didn't, right. you know, but I felt as a director, I needed to make sure that when we showed up on set, that they were prepared and that I was available to answer all the questions that they can possibly wow. have. So I made it a ritual every night before a shoot, I would call them. We would sometimes speak one-on-one or we would speak, you know, the two of them, that's the Mason in Brooklyn, uh, Tayshawn yeah. and Amber. And we would go over the scene, you know, what is, you know, because just reading words off the paper doesn't really help you dive in emotionally to what it is that that's expected of you. Wow. And they ask lots of questions, you know, which is which is a good thing. And being the writer, co-writer of it, I was able to really help them understand who Mason was, because Mason is not Tayshawn, who Amber was, because I mean, who Brooklyn wow. was, because, yeah. you know, Brooklyn is not Amber, totally different people. So they really needed to connect. And the only way, you know, you have to be that bridge for them. So I would get on set. And we're very comfortable. Everything is going good. That people are looking at me like, "Dag, is Suricon directing?" No, I'm confident in my mind already. They are going to do what they're here to do. We went sure. over that yesterday, so yeah. now we can handle other things and you know get through the day. But uh, yeah, wow. man, it, it's wow. a lot. 
Yeah, that's amazing. That I mean, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I'm wooed, you know, and and wooed over that. Just just hearing that and that type of you know and that style of production, man. And I love the fact that you said, but I have my own formula, you know. And you know, as a as a director, I'm sure sometimes producer, um, what 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 is the general uh, formula for a producer to go by? Is there a general general uh, format for a producer? Actually, I was director. I'm um, yeah, director. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, I meant to say director. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Well, like I said, understanding the story—that's number one. Okay. A writer on it, so I definitely understood the story. Um. Also, like I said, the the selecting of, of those people that are going to play those roles—that's mm -hmm. is, is really crucial. So you know, again, I don't know what directors do. I don't know what Spike Lee do, Tyler Perry, anyone else. I know what I do. It's <laughs> right, again, right. I don't study people. We don't need another Tyler Perry. We don't need another no. Spike Lee. We don't no. need another Martin Scorsese. We need a Suricon. We need a, whoever the upcoming directors are, whoever out there believes that that's what they want to be. So directing, you know, it's just not cut in action. A lot of people believe that it's just that. It's not that. It's those things that I was just talking to you about. And then also being able to navigate the whole yes. production process yes. and know that when you're on set, you know, everyone looks to you for guidance. Everyone looks to you yeah. for that answer. You know, producers are over the directors, of course, but on set, yeah. everyone looks to that from you. If you're That's doing it. something on set, you're pulling out, say, fake guns, and you're, and you're filming in the projects, you're pulling out fake guns, and you don't have the proper credentials, the permits, and all of these things to do that. Police walks up, they're going to arrest the director. They're not looking wow. for anyone, it's the director. Wow. And they're wow. going to say, where is the credentials? Where's the permits? Where's the things that you need for this? You should know better than this. You can't pull out fake guns in the street. What if an old woman looks out the window, yeah. thinks something is really going on, has a heart attack and die because you out there making a film and didn't want to take the time to go and get the right paperwork and do everything. So a director has to think about Wow. All of those things, risk wow. management, what's going on here, making sure we're with, within the budget. We're not over. We got to be out of here this time. If something from the script needs to be cut, what will we cut that won't screw up the whole thing? So you got all these things going on in your mind all wow. at the same time. Wow. To make oh. sure you can get to the silver screen or get on TV. That's how you know you did, you know, you came through. Whoa.